So you're thinking about diving into the world of CD collecting. That's awesome. And I wanna be the first to welcome you into an incredibly satisfying hobby. One of the first big decisions you're going to face is choosing the right CD player. And I know what you're wondering, should you go with something brand new or maybe opt for a classic used model? Well, it really boils down to what you prioritize and value. But from what I've seen and experienced, a lot of you out there might actually find yourselves leaning towards an older CD player. Let's break down why that might be the case. Don't you want a CD player that's not only awesome to listen to, but also a masterpiece of build quality, something that's designed to last for decades? You can absolutely find something special that checks all the boxes for you with a new or you CD player. There are plenty of choices within both camps. We must understand that this isn't just about preferences. It's about recognizing the value we place on longevity and self-sufficiency in our tech. It's a real reflection of where we've ended up with consumer electronics. Making the right choice means digging deeper and understanding how things are made regardless of the time period. When it comes to the whole package, that's build quality, the ability to fix it yourself, longevity, and that classic vibe, older CD players answer the call. When we talk about sound quality, many of these vintage players often keep up with the pricier and newer models. How, you may wonder? Well, by the early 2000s, CD playback technology had pretty much hit its peak. It was all dialed in. Over the last 20 years, there haven't really been groundbreaking improvements in lasers or mechanisms. The primary advancements have been in DAC architecture. While newer DACs are fantastic for streaming, thanks to their you know support for higher bit rates and bandwidth, CDs, which operate at 44.1 kilohertz and 16-bit, don't benefit as much. Now, here is where I share a golden egg, life hack, grail piece of advice. You're my Obi-Wan. The Philips TDA 1541 DAC chip. This chip is renowned for delivering a rich and immersive listening experience. It's one of a kind DAC chip, really is. It's used in older models. I've compiled a list of vintage players featuring this chip. You can find the link below. If you're in the market for a CD player and not planning on using an external DAC, targeting one with the TDA 1541 chip could be your best bet for just unparalleled sound quality. However, it's important to consider the availability of replacement parts. Despite their solid build, these old players aren't immune to wear and tear over decades. They will eventually need to be serviced. You have to make sure that there's a reliable source for spare parts like lasers and other components on platforms like eBay. This step is crucial because some vintage players have become literally unobtainium, making parts just scarce and difficult to find. If there's a vintage CD player special to you, either you owned it or really want it for one reason or another, drop a comment below and tell us all about it. Anything you want to share with the class? Now, I will always recommend purchasing a CD player, new or used, with a digital output of some kind in case you do decide to branch out further into the hobby and experiment with external decks. Yes, even if you buy one of the Grail players with that TDA 1541 chip, how fun would it be to compare the sound with modern DACs? Well, maybe that's just a me thing, but I do enjoy hearing the differences amongst other DACs. I feel like it's an important perk of the hobby that, you know, shouldn't be ignored. Can we buy one? In today's market, you're not going to see a flood of brand new CD players lining the shelves, mainly because, well, the demand hasn't quite peaked again. Yet, that doesn't mean there's a shortage of options. There's a variety out there, ranging from cheap plastic disposable shit all the way up to those overpriced, overhyped high-end machines that can easily become the centerpiece of your audio setup. When you're out there in the wild looking for a new player, features are gonna be key. The modern offerings bring to the table conveniences like USB inputs for playing tracks off of external hard drives or thumb drives, not to mention Bluetooth connectivity, and in some cases, streaming capabilities. Take the Premier CD35, for example. It's a staple in my setup for just these reasons. Unfortunately, you're not going to find these features on your vintage 80s or 90s gear, though some did start appearing in the late 2000s. With new players, there's a bit of mystery involved too. What's really under the hood isn't always apparent since the days when manufacturers included repair schematics with their devices is long gone. It's a tough break for those of us passionate about the right to repair, faced with the reality that many modern products 
just seem designed with a shorter lifespan in mind. I call a lot of today's products disposable because many are priced low enough to where in two to three years they break and instead of fixing it, you replace it because it's just cheaper to do so, which is sad because then that habit starts to dilute some of these products. You don't have the opportunity to buy a holy grail item in 2024 because they just aren't being built with longevity in mind. Makes sense. R&D goes to finance and says, hey, I got an idea for a fresh new CD player. And the accountant says, you have X amount of dollars to make it work. So then instead of going to going the Kenny Shiwata route, which translates to use the best components for the job, a lot of these engineers are financially forced to go to the, some of the lowest bidders. You know, if, this were, if this were my project, I'd rather not do it than put out dog shit that won't last or sound good for that matter. I'm happy to report, lucky for us, not all companies go down this road. Now, the question that vintage players already answered, will the brand new CD players you buy today last 30 or 40 years? Honestly, no one can promise you that. Nobody. I don't care if you're Warren Buffett or if you're Jimmy Buffett, nobody knows. Predicting the longevity of tech bought in 2024, it's just impossible. But hey, give it 30 years and I'll drop another video to fill you in on how these early 2020s devices held up when I'm 71, still producing banger videos. At this point, I'm sure you guys are like, okay, well, what do I, what do I buy? Well, you're the only one that can answer that. On one side, you have the nostalgia, sound quality, collectability, and durability of a used player at the risk that it may end up being the gift that keeps on giving with future repairs. Or you can go with a new player that may sound just fine and have tons of features, but its lifespan is unknown and it may not have been built with as much love or intention as the vintage bunch, but it has Bluetooth right? You're a Bluetooth. God, nobody can make this decision for you, unfortunately, guys. I like having both since I am dedicated to this hobby and want to experience as many different players as possible. However, many of you may just want one really nice one. I can confidently say that Premier does build solid products. They aren't the cheapest option out there, but you get what you pay for with build quality, features, and sound signature. They're also really nice people. I like the fact that you can engage with the company. It's not, you know, a faceless mass conglomerate that you can't talk to nobody. These people specialize in producing high quality systems and it shows. Now, if you're, we're not sponsored by Premier, mind you. Now, if you're looking for the top of the line with a really conservative budget, going vintage or used is the best way to own something iconic for a fraction of what the top of the line would have cost you today. There are a ton of amazing players by Wadia, AccuPhase, Lynn, Mark Levinson, etc. You get the point. Uh, that they're not going to put you in financial turmoil. You know, they're available. So my advice is qualify yourself, just like a salesperson would back in the day. Start by considering how you plan to use the CD player. Is it for casual listening at home, an audiophile setup, or perhaps part of a larger system like a home theater? Understanding your primary use will help you narrow down your search. Determine how much you're willing to spend. This will help you decide whether you're in the market for a high-end model, you know, maybe something more budget friendly or maybe even a grail in the used market. Setting a budget early on keeps your search focused. List the features that are important to you. Do you need USB inputs for digital files, Bluetooth for wireless listening, or a particular DAC chip known for its sound quality? Deciding on your non-negotiables will further refine your options, especially when choosing between modern and vintage models. Consider the sound quality you're expecting. Are there specific brands or models you've heard good things about? Researching and even listening to a few options, if possible, can give you a benchmark for what to expect and help identify models that meet your standards. Think about how important durability and the ease of repair are to you. Do you prefer the peace of mind that comes with a warranty or a on a new model, or are you drawn to the robust build and potentially longer lifespan of vintage players? Understanding your stance on these issues will help you balance the trade-offs between new and old models, focusing on what matters most to you in terms of longevity and maintenance. By taking the time to go through these steps, you'll gain a clearer picture of what you're looking for in a CD player, making it just easier to find a model that not only meets your needs, but also brings you joy and satisfaction in your audio experience. After reflecting on these questions, you're all set to start your search. My advice, 
dive deep into a variety of models, make it a point to read or watch reviews on the ones that catch your eye, paying special attention to any consistent experiences or patterns highlighted by reviewers. Then take the plunge. Embrace this hobby wholeheartedly. It's been the most exhilarating electronic adventure I've embarked on in years, and I think you'll find it just as rewarding. If you enjoyed the video and got something from it, I encourage you to insult the like button. I humbly ask that if this is your type of content, please subscribe to the channel because it helps me grow. And of course, ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I will see you on the next one, friends. Take care.